Good morning, this is Eric Hyatt, Product Technical Specialist on Drive Axles. Today we're going to talk about the replacement decision and additional other things like how a seal fails, how do you do the correct repair, how do you install a carrier properly to make sure that that carrier lives through its longest life possible. Meritor Authorized Rebuild Program. As we know, the result of a truck down situation can be a costly situation for your business. That is why it's our goal to get your truck back up and running as soon as possible. With our straightforward two-year warranty program and nationwide network of authorized rebuilders and dealers, there are more than 60 location, rebuilder locations in Canada and the US and the product is available through all your OEM dealer channels. We are committed to ship a Meritor authorized unit within 24 hours, regardless of where your location's at. The Meritor authorized rebuilder program includes a two year nationwide full assembly warranty, it includes parts and labor, easily beats the typical rebuilder's unit at one year parts only warranty built with care by Meritor trained commercial vehicle rebuilders. All genuine gears and bearings are used in the replacement and the product is upgraded to current product standards. You order the same Meritor part number through either the authorized rebuilder or the Meritor OEM. If you want more information you can Google Meritor Authorized Rebuilder to get a list of the locations. The link is at the bottom of the page. Carriage of housing leak repairs. Common between a lot of axle carriers in the industry, there are leaks that have started. They're due to the high torque engines and the heavy loading that cause the axle housing to flex at critical points. Due to that flexing, the carrier to housing uh, joint can begin to leak. There are two repair methods. One is RTV sealant, which is what we use in production. And the second is a gasket sealing method for service. And that's new to the industry. It is the preferred method under heavy loading conditions. Both sealing methods work best in conjunction with the tapered dowel installation that you see on the right. Note, surface preparation is critical for all repair methods. Carrier to housing leak repairs, the tapered hole process. Current production models have the tapered holes installed in the factory. But you can retrofit the hole using the part number jig 164 bit tool to install that hole into an existing carrier. It requires a main, uh, minimum parent material of 120 thousandths around that hole in order to retrofit the process. You use a dowel kit, part number KIT 4288 for specific models of 14X, 13X and 160, 164 models. A new carrier and cap can be purchased with the taper holes installed from the factory. For reference, see details in TP0753. The taper dial locations are outlined in the illustrations below. The hole locations vary between the different carriers. So please look at the TP document 0753 for the specific locations if you're going to retrofit in the dowels into that older carrier unit. The RTV seal up method. You must have a clean oil free surface for the RTV to adhere to the housing. A quarter inch bead around the entire circumference as well as the bolt holes is required. Only apply it to one surface though. If you don't torque the bolts properly, you will have a leak on that joint. Any oil dripping across the sealant will cause a leak and it must be addressed before installing the carrier. 
Taper dowels are required for specific models along with the RTV product. The downside is it requires a much longer dry time. After installation, you must stop the vehicle or park the vehicle for a minimum of eight hours for the uh, sealant to dry properly. Otherwise, you will have another leak. Well, with the gasket repair method, we have gaskets now for three models. 14X, 145, 160 models. Three different part numbers encompass those th uh, specific models with front and rear mounting locations. It requires a spray-on sealant to be applied to one surface of the gasket to adhere to the housing. It requires the tapered dowels. The nice thing, it is easy to install with no wait time to put the vehicle back in service. And it is the best fix in the industry for leaks between carrier and housing. Installing the gasket is fairly simple. Apply the Permatex 865 gasket material to one side of the gasket and one side of the housing. Install guide studs to guide the gasket into place as well as keep the carrier from pinching the gasket or disturbing the art uh, Permatex sealant. Install the tapered dowels as well as the bolts and torque to the proper specs. Torquing the fasteners is still critical even in this method. So we talked about three gasket part numbers. There are two ga one gasket for the 14X and 145 front and rear carriers, simple. And then there is a gasket for the Ford carrier, the 160 and rear carrier, the 160, it's totaling three part numbers. They're sold in kits of 10 gaskets a piece. And you will have to purchase the dowel kit part number KIT 4288 with this installation. 14X adjusting ring leaks. This leak is often misdiagnosed as a seal leak on many carriers. If you remove the yoke and look at the primary and secondary seal leaps, lips, if you see red grease, then the seal or the leak path was not through the seal. The adjusting ring is most likely the leak path on older carriers. A repair kit was put together and it includes a new adjusting ring as well as the MLS seal. Just remember, warranties require you to replace the seal with an MLS seal. Adjusting rings built on carriers that have the problem were produced between February of uh, 28th of 2015 to September 23rd of 2015 and are not compatible with the later cover designs. So use an adjusting ring repair kit and discard the old adjusting ring for the old cover designs. Kit 2920 is designed for that old cover replacement repair and kit 2935 is designed for the new cover repair. Do not use Loctite 565 on the older designs a leak will occur because that Loctite is not as durable or as strong as the Loctite that's specified in kit 2920. Okay, 14X cover adjusting rings. There has been a design change in this area. The old design was simple in an adjusting uh, thread design as you see on the left. And the new design incorporates the O-ring into the design. The part numbers for the new design are listed below for pump and non-pump applications. Axle carrier seal failures. It's important to to torque the end yoke to the proper torques and look for spline wear or excessive movement in the yoke. That excessive movement causes the failure. Competitive seals were not designed for that excessive movement. So Meritor designed into the MLS seal uh, additional movement to allow the seal to live longer. The MLS seal is used on all of our carriers from 13X to 380 uh, tandems as well as the transfer case models. Leaks are one of the top failures in carriers and most of the time they result in a burnt up carrier assembly. The ML 
MLS SEAL family has been around for a lot of years, over 15 years of service, and it is a reliable replacement. It is a two-piece design and outperforms most single-piece designs three times longer than the typical one-piece design. Don't compromise your repair with an imitation SEAL. SEALs and SEAL drivers are available through the Meritor Distribution Network, WDs and or dealers. You can order part number KIT4463 and 2730T1A drivers to support the installation of that SEAL. SEAL drivers are required to have the proper installation. Do not install the seal without the appropriate driver or you will damage it and a leak will occur. Installing the wear sleeve on the yoke. Use a dead blow hammer or an arbor press and the appropriate driver to install the wear sleeve. Seat to the appropriate depth outlined in TP0446 to achieve the correct installation. Install the seal into the carrier. Use a dead blow hammer and the appropriate driver to install the seal into the bearing cage. Use a feeler gauge to verify the seal gap and the seal should be installed correctly if the gap is less than five thousandths of an inch. Output shaft seal leaks. Another oil path that is commonly overlooked is the Fourier carrier output shaft seal. During forward carrier replacement, always inspect that output shaft assembly for movement. Best practice is to replace the bearings and seal every time a forward carrier is replaced. Output bearing and play inspection. The output shafts wear with age and the envi operating environment. Interaxial angles can infect how quickly those bearings wear. The output bearings are mounted in a cage and must operate at a specific end play. If you can feel movement by hand, then it's more than the one to four thousandths. Verify with a dial indicator. If it's out of spec, inspect or replace the bearings and seal and then adjust the bearing end play. Adjustment is accomplished with a change of the snap ring thickness. Output bearing end play adjustment. Disassemble and inspect the bearings for wear before re-shimming the end play. Bearing replacement is the best practice for the system's longevity and seal life. Replace this selective snap ring as required. Recheck the end play until end play reading is between one and four thousandths. Warranty requires that a new Meritor seal is installed with the driver. Axle yoke removal. Before using a removal tool on the yoke, attempt to move it by hand. If you can move it by hand, the yoke or yoke splines are worn and the yoke must be replaced. Use a puller or suitable tool to remove the yoke from the input shaft or pinion. Tiger Tool makes a tool of part number 10803 and it's a heavy duty yoke removal tool. Yoke installation. A special yoke or flange driving tool is used to install that yoke or flange. The tool part number is MST-YT114. That tool can be used to draw the yoke or flange onto the shaft without having to use a nut. If you use a nut to draw the yoke or flange onto the shaft, you must remove it discard that nut and install a new nut. Torque the nut with a torque wrench and torque multiplier to the manufacturer's specifications. If you do not use a torque multiplier, you most likely will not achieve the torque ratings. An impact wrench does not achieve the correct torque settings. Driveline vibration complaint. If you have a driveline vibration, Eventually, the axle seals will fail if you don't address the vibration. Vibrations may be attributed to several chassis issues. Could be tire, could be drum imbalance, could be driveline angles, 
associated to ride height of the suspension or engine vibration. The best method to determine the source of that vibration is the use of a vibration analysis tool. Suspension ride height on the air ride suspensions is a majority contributor to axle seal wear and leaks. Measure the ride height per the manufacturer's specifications. No incorrect ride height will impact the longevity of axle seals, U-joints, center bearings, and slip spline life. Driveline PM inspections. Check the slip spline phasing. Check for the proper phasing per the OEM manufacturer specification. Out of phase is a common position today in most trucks. Therefore, you must check with the OEM to determine if the shaft should be in phase or out of phase. Check the center bearing yoke phasing. Check the center shaft for the proper phase and look for the marks on the shaft in the figure to the right to assure that the uh, yoke was put on after center bearing replacement in the right phase. Most of those shafts are in phase condition. Again, check with your OEM to confirm what the phasing is. Finally, check the suspension right height. Check for the height per the manufacturer specifications. Drive for uptime rebate. A program has been initiated to help uh, sanitize the purchase of a Meritor authorized remand carrier. A $50 rebate is available for every purchase between the month of August 19th through December 31st in 2019. Refer to the document on, on file for that through the website MeritorAuthorized.com and there is a rebate at drive for uptime.com. Join us next month. Next month's seminar will cover wheel ends. Thank you.